let's bring it into the booth. Mike Flanagan along with Tom Carter here tonight to bring you the final championship round of the PBA Lightning Strikes Open here from Fort Myers, Florida. First time working together with you. Exactly, and it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. we got a great show planned for tonight because Bukowski and Walter Ray on the title opening match. Couldn't ask for a better start. No doubt. It's going to be a great one here tonight. We're glad you're with us here on Bowl TV. So our stepladder final tonight in the first match, as you mentioned, we have John Rakowski, the local favorite, taking on Walter Ray Williams Jr. Winner of that match goes on to take on who, Tom? Uh, I think it's. Uh, hmm. Let me think. Dino Castile? No. Chris Barnes. <laughs> Then the winner of that match goes on to take on <laughs> Dino Castillo, and our number one seed is Brad Angelo here tonight. Glad you're with us here on Bowl TV. Mike Flanagan and Tom Carter with you. And we also have Craig Elliott down on the lanes. We'll get to Craig here in just a minute as we're getting started here in our opening match. I think you're going to tell by the crowd favorite who he's going to be. John Rakowski, he's got a whole group of people back here cheering him on. Yeah, he sure does. Players got here by making it through 14 games of qualifying, an advancer's round of five games, and then they made it through bracket play. Three games, total pins. Yeah. The three games total pins is something new to us. We haven't done that in the past. It's always either been either all match play or – best three out of five or some kind of elimination but it's never been it's kind of like the masters three game totals which is a, a a unique nice new flavor for us out here on the senior tour walter ray also the defending champion walter told me uh earlier this week that he just wanted to cash this week he hasn't been throwing the ball too well lately but he worked some things out in his arm swing and maybe you can allude to a little bit more of that tom what he's well, talking about well he uh he was during the practice round, uh, he had asked Johnny Petragli. He goes, he didn't have a problem with the swing. And uh, what did Johnny had told him? He noticed Walter usually kind of loops the ball out and brings it really tight into his side and is really right underneath his, his head at the point of release. And uh, Johnny said that he wasn't doing that. He said, so make it feel like your sleeve of your shirt is touching your side as you come through from the peak of your swing. And it's obviously worked. Craig Elliott's been here with us all week. Craig, you got a copy down there? I do. Coming through loud and clear. I got, I got a question on that. So we got Johnny Petraglia helping out Walter Ray Williams Jr. That doesn't even sound fair, does it? Two of the greatest of all time working together. That's probably why they're the greatest of all time. And it looks like it was a good tip for Walter. Quickly, I've got Jeff Johnson here, ball rep for the Brands of Brunswick. He's actually got both players in this first match. Jeff, what are the guys throwing down there? Um, well, we just moved Rakowska. He was uh, he was going to use a Columbia Speed. He's been he's been using an Ebonite GB4 pretty much all weekend. And with the last few shots, it was time to get him, you know, back into that. And uh, he threw some pretty good shots right there at the end. It's like you know what? If it's not broke, don't fix it. Let's just stay with what that is. So Tom was working with Walter more than I was. So I think he's using the Evo Pearl. That's what he was throwing the most. He had a Brunswick Defender up there for a while but uh he's been pretty solid with that uh evil pearl most of the most of the, the day today at least so should be a good match all right thanks jeff back to you guys john making it look really pretty simple but you know he's no stranger to winning again I, we mentioned it earlier that he's won the tat twice uh he, he's just a and i don't think his expression ever ever changes I don't know if he's got 100 in a row or he hasn't done anything. He just looks the same. He, he's, he's got formaldehyde in his system. He, he's just cool, calm, and collected. Walter Ray with a double of his own. Well, both of them are playing probably pretty close to their, their favorite line. A little straighter, a little farther outside. He said Rakowski was going to start out with that speed. Uh, Tyler had shined that up for him, and it looked pretty good there at the start of practice, but then it just looked like it uh, wasn't reading quite the way that he's comfortable for John, and he switched back to that GB4. Well, that was the break of the century right there. <laughs> <laughs> Twisting out the seven pin. Scores have been very high this week. They're bowling on the 42 feet in length mark 
froth pattern. 32 feet is the oil. It buffs to 42, about a 4.4 to 1 ratio. Still pretty flat, but when you give these guys anything over 3 to 1, they can really light them up. Well, they have a hook spot that they can throw it to, and they know that the ball is going to react. So when you throw it to the hook spot, he got that in. He never got it to the right. But when you got a hook spot, your swing kind of loosens up a little bit because you know if you throw it to the right, it's coming back. Yeah, that ball never seen right. It was straight up the lane. Covers the spare. So Max 278 early in the match and 290 for Walter Ray Williams Jr. It's funny we talk about Max's, but that's what the scores have been like all day. Just huge scores. 79, 290, 289. Chris Barnes almost had 300. He had 279 his last match to get to the top five. Wrap oh. 10 for John. John's just so smooth the line. He, he gets set up, he's got his hand under the ball, and just he just looks like he just lets the ball swing his arm. He never tries to overwork the ball. All right, we're clean through four and a half frames here in the opening match. Tell you what, we're so excited to be bringing you the PBA 50 tour here on Bowl TV. It's really awesome, uh, that opportunity that came up. I want to thank everybody that's recently subscribed to Bowl TV and those of you that are fans of the PBA 50 tour. Great shot by Walter, gives him spare four bagger. We were, you know, I think everybody on the PBA senior tour is wondering what was going to happen. Uh, if there was going to be any kind of coverage, and Bull TV stepped up and picked it up, and it, it's going to be a great season. we got 17 stops, and I think you guys are here all 17 stops. Yep, all 17, all the way through the uh, PBA 60 events as well. Walter Ray, spare five-bagger, doing what he does, strike a lot. Walter, the last year, broke John Handegard's record of 14 PBA senior titles. Now Walter has 15, and at this rate, he's looking to make it 16. John back on the hunt with the strike, but he needs to put some strikes together. I want to give a shout out to everybody in the chat right now that is tuning in. We see all the comments in there while we're up here mixing the show and bringing you the coverage. I want to encourage everybody to participate in the chat. It is a great way to interact with other fellow bowlers as well as us up here in the booth. And they can ask questions through the chat if we have something that uh, they need to know or like for us to find out. Bada boom, we got ourselves a match here. John Rakowski, 267 if he goes off the sheet. Walter going at a 290 pace. And you wouldn't think a 42 foot pattern on a four to one ratio would be that much of a strike fest, but it definitely has been this week. What a great shot there by Walter. Let's take a look at it again. Watch Walter. Walter doing what he does best, playing that outside angle. I mean, if, if you've ever watched professional bowling on TV, you've seen Walter play this shot a ton. And he can repeat. And that's the biggest thing about here. No matter what the pattern is, uh, once you find it, you got to be able to repeat it. And Walter's known for just repeat, repeat. I believe we call that the ham turkey dinner in the uh, in the live streaming world. Craig uh, reminded me that a little bit earlier. 
Well, John up on the right lane in the eighth, and he definitely has to put the eighth and ninth together to even put any kind of pressure back onto Walter. John is just so ho hum, carefree. <laughs> just like, oh well. He's got a great look. <laughs> Don't forget the winner of this match is going to take on Chris Barnes. Chris has been on fire in these three game shootouts, especially the third yeah, game. Say, the third game has been what, 279, 289, 279. Uh, that might be the most excitement you see out of John Rakowski. A little bit of a fist pump right there. And that was <laughs> that was it. We got a heck of a match here. 267 the max for Rakowski. Walter Ray can still bowl 290. And Chris Barnes just fouled down on the practice pair. <laughs> That's a <laughs> And we were talking about ball speed in the previous matches. You look it up here, these guys are throwing it on this pair. 15-5. Hey, let's 15, send it down to, uh, to Craig Elliott. I think he's standing by with Chris Barnes, maybe? Yeah, guys, I got Chris down here, and uh, he's going to go clean up that spare. But, Chris, you're getting ready to a bowl for uh, potentially another title here in a couple games with a couple wins. What's your strategy getting ready for this match? Well, these guys are both playing to the right. We broke them down. I'm just going to be a little bit inside of them. And, uh, I mean, Brad's going to want to play the right. Dino's probably going to play closer where I am. Not a lot of strategy, just going to try and find which one will knock out the ring 10. Uh, they might get a little bit cliffed with these guys playing where they're playing, but just figure out which one gets through them. Got each us figured out. All right, thanks, Chris. Good luck. That was almost a 5 7 there. Certainly was. We saw Parker Bone do that to, to not make the show. He left a 5 10 on his side of the lane. And they, we he keep talking about ball speed just because I think it's a factor on this pattern. That was a faster shot than he'd been thrown by almost a mile an hour. So maybe it never gave the ball enough lane time to read the pattern. Walter and make it up needs in the pocket. this spare. He's got it. So Walter can bowl 269, 267 the max. So Walter needs nine on this ball. And he will advance, take on Chris Barnes. That's tough, uh, you, making this show and, and possibly bowling 267 and, and, and not winning. <laughs> and not even getting a sniff. I mean, no, not at all. Nine, strike, Walter. Strike's going to do it. Walter advances. Hey, John Rakowski bowled, he's bowled great all week, and he just kept climbing the ladder, getting higher and higher up, and obviously ends up making the show. Uh, if he comes out on the senior tour, we're definitely going to see more of him. What a great opening game here for Walter Ray Williams Jr. Again, he is the defending champion. John, John's swing and on that front view there is just so fluid through the shot, kind of open hands that just lets the ball read the lane. It's incredible. Still finish up with 267. We just had those two little hiccups right there in the fourth and fifth. But I mean, literally both these guys, we could have had a 300 to 300 match the way they were bowling. Absolutely, Tom. That would have been nice to see. So the final score of our opening match, Walter Ray Williams Jr. defeats John Rakowski 269 to 267. As he's taking these shots, just real quick, because I put it on my Facebook page that uh, I was going to be helping out doing the color, and people were asking how to subscribe. Uh, 
to Bowl TV. How do you go about that? Yeah, you just go to BowlTV.com and you pick your pick your poison. You can either sign up for the monthly, you can sign up for event passes, or you can also sign up for the annual subscription here on Bowl TV. And we've got a lot of events coming up here this summer. Not only the PBA 50 Tour, also got the PWBA Tour coming up. Going to be kicking off here in a month or so. And then also Junior Gold and all the other events right now. We're also streaming uh, the Intercollegiate uh, Championships as well right now. So we've got several channels going, a lot going on here on so Bowl TV. So there's plenty to watch then. There's plenty to watch. Yes, there is. Hey, guys, i got John Rakoski down here. First of all, John, great bowl. And, and you know, you. I think I figured out what you have to do to win it. You just need to average almost 270. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> I mean, Dino shoots 78 against you. Walter shoots 269, but fantastic bowling. I mean, I know it's not the result you wanted, but your first event, you finished fifth. How's it feeling right now? No, it's – it's. I'm a very humble person, and um, I I couldn't be any – I couldn't have done anything more. I mean, I'm happy with the fifth, but shooting 267 and losing to Walter, nothing to be ashamed about. I, I can't hold my head down with bowling with these guys. How much more are we going to see you out here this year? Um, that I don't know, because um, I'm a non-member. This is my second time cashing this year, so um, if I want to bowl anymore, I got to get a card. So I don't know if I want to do that. I got to talk to Matt. Um, I bowl nationals with him, so um, I'm not sure. All right, thanks a lot, again. Congratulations, nice bowling this week. Thank you. Pretty awesome <laughs> performance down there. Thanks, Craig, for grabbing John. Well, that's a. Uh well, if he doesn't join, <clears throat> I guess that's good news for some people because there's one more check to be had. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> because <laughs> there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to be cashing every tournament he pulls. If you look down at the lanes, you see Kelly Kulik and Matt McNeil. They are the uh, Storm Tour representatives here. Kelly working out on the senior tour this year. And Matt just moved here, lives nearby, and is helping Kelly out here this week. So I want to give them a shout-out as well, those, those uh, tour reps for, for Storm Products, SPI, Storm Products Incorporated. We were talking earlier about how well the center was and how great the air conditioning is. And if you look at Kelly, she's got a hoodie and a jacket on. It is cool in here. It is. It is <laughs> definitely cool in here. I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here on uh, on barn shots and get a little better look at at the way he's playing the lanes. Well, he's definitely doing what he said. He's gonna be inside of where Walter was playing. Uh, he's gonna be hooking it more. And I believe he's throwing that reality that he switched to to beat Amaletto uh, in the match previous to this to get to the show. Yeah, you know, Barnes, he he, he, he mystifies me here. The, the, the third game, he's used multiple bowling balls now. He, this is the most smooth, controlled ball that we've seen him use, and he really liked it coming off the last pair, but that was, that was eight, ten lanes to the right. In this zone here, we watched him bowl so well against Jason Couch and Tom Hess right in this bay. And, and Chris Barnes, he's got multiple tools in his bag uh, and able, I mean, there was, there was this, when he made the move, he had so much miss room right and left. Uh, he, could, he could bowl 300 here tonight. It, it, well, it's hard to beat when you have miss room both directions and you've got area down lane. He, and he's got the favorite ball that you were calling, the RST X1 out there, that's that purple ball. Uh, that uh, seemed to be the ball of choice for most of his matches. Yeah, especially after the first game. He in qualifying he used a gym and shot four eighty to five ten his first two games through through all three qualifying rounds. And he started with that in the bracket today, but it started burning up and giving him kind of a weird ball reaction. He believes it's the way that the lanes have been conditioned throughout the week. More more and more you strip an oil and reoil, it changes a little bit of the way that the pattern is blended and the gym wasn't working as much. But every single round Chris Barn has made critical ball changes to get him here to the show. And this last one with this last ball that you mentioned, Kelly Kulik actually suggested it to him in the last match. And that was the right ball because the pair that he was on, him and Amaloto, the left lane, lane 37, was absolutely going sideways on the back end. And they kept moving left, kept moving left, and the ball just kept jumping off the pattern so angular that, I mean, they were leaving weird splits, uh, four pins, four tens, and right, Kelly suggested this ball and blended out the back end of the pattern, and he just started striking forever. He's won a few championships for this time. 19 times he's won in the PBA Tour. In 1998, he was the PBA Tour's Rookie of the Year, and in 2008, he was the PBA Tour Player of the Year. Please welcome Chris Barnes to the top five. Yeah. 
Tom, how about 66 titles on the PBA Tour national level between these two players? Well, th there's definitely, it, it, you can't say anything except for great bowling and great experience because they, they obviously see the lane different than a lot of players. They figure it out. And when you get into the teens, you know, and you got guys out here like you know, Norm, you know, with 40-some titles and Parker, I mean, when you get that many titles, you understand what your ball motion is and you understand what the lane is giving you and you you make the right moves. Uh, most of us are five to six frames behind the move if we make the right move. You know, uh, the grades are great for a reason. They see things that just as normal human beings don't see. Hey, Mike and Tom, uh, real quick. I, I got David Forbes back here from Audi Fort Myers. And just before we started, you guys heard the, they decided to kick in a little bonus today, $2,500 if somebody chooses 300 Oh, wow. David, oh. thanks for the sponsorship. We appreciate that. Is that going to be cold, hard cash or check? That's cold, hard cash for somebody who, who takes it. There is something unusual. Walter just yeah, like chopped it. the 610 off of the three pin. Well, thank you so much for the 2500 I'm sure that the guys are going to be a little more pressed to strike now. Yeah, the local sponsors of this event, of course, Audi of Fort Myers. We just uh, heard from Craig down there. And uh, also Suncoast Beverages here, big supporters. Second year here at Lightning Strikes Bowl. Can they use that 2500 for a down payment on an Audi? I'm sure they could. <laughs> I'm sure they'd gladly take that. <laughs> Here's Barnes now, opening shot, looking good. That ball just looks like it's rolling so forward when it hits the pins and just pushing everything back. Yeah, I've said it a couple of times. I'll say it here in the championship match. You know, it wasn't too long ago, Kelly Kulik was bowling against Chris Barnes on television for the Tournament of Champions. And now Kelly Kulik is here helping Barnes potentially to win here tonight. That's uh, kind of a strange turn of events you might say but she definitely picked the right ball because that ball is doing the trick for chris instead of that uh, the uh, the purple one the rst2 that he was throwing because that was so angular off the pattern but it it was reading the pattern just fine up until another reoil then another reoil and things change All right, the six does not lean into the ten there. Walder, not to say that he lost his carry, but it doesn't seem like the ball is hitting quite the same. And Chris warmed up. You, you're talking about that gym that he was throwing. When they had their eight minutes of practice uh, before the show started, Chris used that quite a bit, plus a uh, UC3. Now, I don't know if he's trying to break the pattern down or just seeing what the lane was giving him, but he did have that ball out. the outside back in the pocket again and he's going to need to stay there he needs to live in the pocket because Chris Barnes has got a great look right now but he, he figured that that's what he was going to do he was going to use what Walter and John had done to the lane because they had broke down the outside a little bit give him a little more hook spot down lane Barnes fidgeting a little bit here as he likes to do and uh, now he's going to go ahead and just uh, put the ball down. Oh, no, he's not. He's going to get a little bit of air into the thumb hole, it looks like. The, his hand's so tight into that ball, he's got to pry his fingers out of it. That was 10 back with no question. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one again. Let's get the style of yeah. Barnes. Chris with a classic left-hand lead. Uh, he's one of the first guys. I, some guys have been doing it for quite a while. Pete's been doing it. Uh, actually, Wayne Webb did it. But it, I think it became more pronounced, and you've seen it when Chris came out because it was so defined when he led with that left arm, which allows that shoulder to open up. He just gives him such an incredible roll and a little extra speed. Not that he needs it. Chris with a front four, Walter with 
unfortunately a 7-2 count. Nine in the first spare strike in the third. Walder up in the fourth. Walter, 10 pin again. It's just like the ball is just laboring a little bit, not reading the back end of the lane quite the right way. It's like it just kind of is dying out on him. Yeah, back to back 10 yeah. pins. Uncharacteristic yeah. here because he just bowled 260 in the opening match. Yeah. What causes that? I, I think the ball is slowing down a little bit too quick and it's lost a, a little energy before it in, enters the pocket and it just can't drive. I, uh, I mean, that from this angle here, that's what I see. It just doesn't look like the ball wants to take off on the back for him. What is Walter's spare ball? Is that a, is that a black beauty? Or? It's a black diamond. Black uh, diamond. That uh, I think Gary Faulkner found for him. And normally balls of that age are all 16, but they found one that was 15. And uh, unfortunately, it kind of looks like it's been through a battle because if you've listened to Walter when he rolls that thing, it basically rolls over the finger and thumb, so it kind of sounds like a mini Gatlin gun going down the lane. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at Walter's last shot as well. Classic style, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Looked like right over 10-11, straight down the lane. Chris playing inside, probably around 17-18. We'll get a better look at it. Out to 7-8. In the previous match, he was winging them clear out to 2-3. Yes, he was. Yeah, and that looked roughly around 16, 17, out to five. And he's just, he's rolling through it. He's got, with that kind of look, and Dino's going to be playing the same part of the lane. So the first match we had John and Walter playing the same part of the lane. Now we got a little bit of a transition going. Next match, uh, we'll have two of the same again. Yep, Dino Castillo up in the next match. Your number one seed, Brad Angelo, tonight, if you're just joining us. Glad you're with us here from Fort Myers. Lightning strikes bowl. That's a beauty from Barnes. Yeah, he posted that and stared that down all the way. <laughs> hey, 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 he's won that 2500 <laughs> He just pulled some money out of his pocket. He's going after that money tonight. <laughs> That was a nice little added incentive right here at the last minute. Certainly was. Shout out again to Audi of Fort Myers. Man, Walter that, just can't get the 10 out on the, the right lane. The ball just doesn't seem to be turning the corner. I mean, it's obviously it looks like it's headed to the pocket. It is not finishing. It's coming in behind the head pin, just dying a little bit. Six wrapping around the 10. You know, Craig Elliott's called all the action here this week with me. Craig, uh, how you doing, man? Just checking in on you. Uh, I'm still breathing, doing all right. So down here with Brad and Dino as they're just getting loose, trying to get ready for whoever they might bowl. And right now it looks like Chris Barnes. And, you know, and I, I let it go a second ago when Chris got the money out because you don't see money come out of his pocket too often. That's true. <laughs> but it, it was just for show. But I guarantee any of these players would be more than happy to take that $2,500 in cash home with them. Yeah, if you end up uh, running into Dino and he's not practicing, you want to grab him, feel free to come on in at any time uh, if you want to talk to him. Will do. All right, that's Craig Elliott down from the lanes. Well, Walter's got a much better look on the left lane. I'm surprised, but Walter's not one to change balls a lot, you know, which would probably be a good idea right now on the right lane if he had a different sphere in his hand, something that's going to give him a little different shape. Barnes has taken a re-rack here. He's serious about 2,500. Great opportunity for us to thank the proprietor, Robert Eddy, and his uh, GM, Christy Raldurus. Chris in the back and uh, all the staff up front helping us out here this week. Uh, it has been a wonderful experience. I know I say that a lot when I'm on the air, but I want to tell you, I, I never know what we're going to come across and all the extra help, all the added things that we may need throughout the week, they took care of us here and we really do appreciate it. Varza seniors out on the tour that travel in motorhomes. Robert gave us a real nice parking lot to set up and we didn't have to go to an RV park, so we were all right here and what a convenience that is to give us water, electricity. That's a big help, you know. Yep. That's fantastic what you guys do, traveling around all the events. And how awesome is it to have such a big, expanded senior tour all summer long? You know, the PBA 50, it's, it's awesome out here. But, well, it's <clears throat> what I, for me, I, in my shop back home, working six days a week, uh, 
for seven and a half months and look every day is just looking forward to coming out here for the 17 events and it, it's still work but it's it's a lot of fun chris barnes is looking forward to a potential 2500 hundred dollar bonus here oh we got away to fort myers yeah there was the replay so here is walter ray now up barnes cruising at this point we'll see if walter can figure out this right lane though he didn't have any problem in the first match but boy it's really been a nemesis here in the second if you've seen that ball, it, it looked like it checked up and just kind of stopped on him, and it's not, it's not driving. This is where I think uh, for Walter, since he plays out, he gets what we call a little wet dry. He's, he's far enough right. He, he's hitting that burn a little bit too soon, and you know the ball could be losing a little bit too much energy. But if he gets it in the oil, then the ball's not going to drive either. So you're kind of you're stuck. You're just filling frames. And nine spare every frame, unfortunately, isn't going to win any of these matches as much as these guys have been struggling. Walter can max it at 209. Barnes, of course, already has the match completely locked up. Hey, Mike, I got Dino down here. Dino could steal a nice ball in this week in the first event here on the 50 Tour. Did you expect to be in this position right now with a chance possibly to bowl for a title in your first event? No, no. I just wanted to throw some good shots and, uh, you know, put out uh, put some big scores up. And I actually did put up some big scores to today. Uh, qualifying, they weren't so high, but they were consistent. So felt good, consistent, but didn't think I'd be in this position uh, this this early in my career. All right, hey, best of luck to you. Nice ball in this week. It's great yeah. being able to hear from the players before the match. Reminds me of old ABC television. Yeah, well, it, it's got to be a great feeling come out to you know your first event and then you find yourself on the show and a chance to actually win your first PBA national title. Barnes can throw a four bagger here for twenty five hundred. Oh. oh. Let's look at that one one more time. Tom, yeah, tell yeah, us yeah, what yeah, happens yeah. here. It, that ball, it looked like it was just a little inside. He needed quite it out to the friction like he had before, and the ball just went a little long. It just didn't drive. Covers that, the spare. Yeah. Well, he knows <laughs> He's only disappointed because he knows he won the match, but he didn't get the 2,500. Yep, yep, and I'm sure Linda is at home. She probably just took an extra sip of wine or something. <laughs> and the topography of this house, because the, the, the surface that we're bowling on is old anvil lane, and, and that's going to come into play. And, and all these pairs play a little bit different. He didn't get that break he wanted in the frame before. Here, this is messenger a, 10. we got to put a replay on a senior messenger, don't yeah. we? Well, look at this. Uh, see, he got that ball farther right to the friction, and and it got it out. And it's a slow motion messenger. We don't get those, you know, the kids' messengers where they're standing up, flying across the lane. Well, Chris has got a better chance than, than most of us. These young players, Dino, you, wait till Dino comes up. He can throw a few messengers. I think the key is you got to get it to friction down lane, down to that spot there. You get that. Roughly a 42 foot spot. The ball is just peeling off the pattern. Yeah, and this is this is the um, I would say when you when you have a ball progression, this is this is the weakest ball that we've seen Chris Barnes use. So I wouldn't know what he would go to from here to blend out the pattern. I would think he would be in this ball the rest of the night. I I, I, I agree. He he has to be unless he has a. There was that there was that ball change, just yeah. a tester there, there. There's your purple ball. Yeah, there's the purple <laughs> ball that he was destroying them with earlier. Unless he's got a symmetrical ball, but he did throw that Axiom Pearl, which is symmetrical early on in the match uh, before these. But it was just so angular off the spot. Now, if he has a solid symmetrical in his bag somewhere, he, he could possibly go to that, depending on the layout, to help smooth out the pattern. Yeah, Chris mentioned earlier he's oh, either going to throw the gem, the RSX2, or, or the altered reality, which you saw him throw early in that game. That's his three balls of choice uh, for, for today. Well, Walter finishing up. Two more strikes. He finally got the strike on the right lane. Possible 198. I know that's disappointing from the game he just shot, thinking you know, he, he had a great look, just his carry went away. 
In the chat, mm. uh, they let me know that Linda is actually uh, at the ITRs, at the uh, Collegiate Championships. And yeah, Chris right. has been watching Bull TV on his phone while while he's been participating, watching yeah, Ryan Bull. I was going to say, he's probably watching Ryan Bull. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, there's some, you know. How about nice hand for the great one, Walter Ray Williams. Uh, congratulations to <laughs> John Weber saying you'll, you'll see Walter next week. He's come close. I don't know how many times the three hundreds today. I don't know how many times. Well, four we know of. Two two seventy nine is the two eighty nine. So Dino Castillo coming on board. Brad Angelo coming on board for his four shots if he wants. Them. Three two seventy nines and a two eighty nine. And we will get the semifinal match under the semifinal match coming up and uh looks like looks like brad's electing not to take practice uh craig might know a little bit more about that i think he was just talking to him uh, yeah oh, he's I, just, coming I think i distracted him so that's that's on me <laughs> he's, like, he's on his gonna way. go throw some shots oh he's coming <laughs> <laughs> well now they're down here just having fun <laughs> yeah dino wants five minutes to study eight shots <laughs> Yeah, let's take a, let's take a look and see what they're going to use with these practice shots here. See what they're going to find out. See what their look looks like. You know, yeah. I think I think it was Craig and you as well, Tom, have both said that you guys kind of thought that Dino Castillo had a look that that nobody else really had in the uh, building here this week. Uh, yeah, I I think he does. He's just his ball is reading the pattern, uh, the most consistent from pair to pair, and he's he's throwing a big ball. He's throwing the obsession tour. He's got a couple down there, different ones. He's got a GB4, uh, and I think he's got a blue melee jab down there. But his release and the way that his ball rotation is reading the pattern, and it's it's sick to watch. He's just throwing pins everywhere. Yeah, Brad and I were talking. He's uh, he's not even going to come up with a game plan yet. He's just going to watch where these guys, you know, end up at the end of their game here because he already knows that Chris is in around third arrow. Dino, of course, is going to curve it. So Brad is just waiting to see what they do before he even thinks about, you know, what balls he's going to throw down the lane. Yeah, and Brad just threw Thanks, that at, at fourth arrow with a phase four. So he's trying to see what's inside. Yeah, and then Brad, you know, throughout the week, uh, out of the players that are left here, is probably the straightest player out of all of them. Playing well, very, yeah. very up the lane. Right. He, he was straighter through the front part of the lane than any of them. They down the boards wise. It's a great opportunity to talk about our other finishers here this week. Through 24 games and making the top 24, Tom Adcock led it as a super senior. He's 60 years old. He averaged 246. And he doesn't throw it like any super senior I know. Brad Angelo was the number two seed. That's how. That's why he is the number one seed. He was the highest remaining player out of everyone that advanced through the bracket. Right. Paul Kaler, uh, that's another great name out there. He finished uh, third through the advancers round uh, to make it into match play. He was the number three seed. John Rakowski, who we saw in our first match. Dino Castillo was fifth. Tom Hess, sixth. He lost to Chris Barnes. Uh, Peter Knopp. Um, From Germany. Yeah, Peter Knopp. My roommate. Tony, oh, he's your roommate. Yeah, he travels with me in the motorhome. Oh, that's awesome. Tony Franklin was eighth, a, a rookie out here this year. Dino Castillo as well, and he had a great match against Walter Ray Williams, Jr., Warren Eels uh, was qualified in the ninth position. Parker Bone, the third, just missed the show, left at 5'10". Brad Angelo went up in the 10th frame and did what he needed to do to lock in the number one seed and eliminated Parker Bone, the third. Chris Barnes was 11th uh, coming in. Dennis Rakowskis was 12th. Pete Weber, 13th. Amleto Monticelli, 14th. Mike Preston, 15th. Lenny Boris, Jr., 16th. Walter Ray was the 17th in. David Covington was 18th. Michael Haugen, Jr., 19th. Troy Lint, 20th. Glenn Smith, 21st. Jason Couch, 22nd. He had a hell of a match with Chris yeah. Barnes. Yeah. yeah, he had the front eight. It looked like he was going to be yeah. Chris and left a bucket. Yeah. I just must have missed it at the bottom of the swing. James Stortz was 23rd and Jeff Johnson, 24th. Those are your top 24 that made it into the match play round. And, of course, these are our, our top and, five here tonight. And Lenny Borsch 
just joined the crowd of 60-year-olds. His birthday was this week. Yeah, two he, days ago. Yes, so he is now 60. And yours truly, I even snuck out a check. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> Got a few more practice shots here. Dino Castillo taking on Chris Barnes, and, and they're buddies. They like to razz each other. They, they run around. They bum around together. And Texas boys. Dino Castillo uh, has, has never won on the, on the PBA Tour. He has seven regional titles, according to the sheet in front of me here. Well, as well as he throws it, uh, and no, as many revs as he puts on it and the speed, and he's got loft if he needs it, uh, I don't think it's going to be an issue of uh, when he, he's going to win. It's just going to be when. This is Dino's first event. It'd be awesome to go one for one here. Maybe he could go on a run like Tom Hess did last year, Rookie of the Year and Player of the Year. Tom went on a tear, and well, he hasn't started out too bad this year either. Yeah. There you have it, John Weber, best in the business. Been doing it a long time. The whole family has. Rich Weber at one time, his older brother was yeah, absolutely. He head of the senior tour for a while. Yep. And uh, ran the Midwest region for quite a while as well. Right. Dino Castillo, as John said, is going to start the match on the left lane. GB4 off his hand. GB4, the ball yeah. of choice. That's a symmetrical, is that a pearl? Symmetrical pearl, yes. Symmetrical pearl, okay. Guys, as you watch Chris throw his, uh, his opening shot here, I do have a little nugget for you. Uh, Dino Castillo and, and Chris obviously bowl together and in the same state and around each other a lot, but Dino actually beat Chris for his first regional title years ago. It's a good tidbit yeah. there. Yeah. Trivia. Thank you, Craig. Oh, that ball, you watch the replay of that. That ball just quit hooking at about 50 feet. Caught a little late, so everybody yeah. get ready for it. Here it is. And Yeah, no, not so much. So interesting, Walter Ray bowls 260 and can't get the 10 out on the right lane early in the match. And now Chris Barnes just bowls 279 and, and can't get the 10 pin out on the right lane. Transition. I did hear Chris come up here. Uh, I overheard him say, it's just a matter of see how far left I have to move after 12 shots. Right. And I'm surprised as his last shot with that uh, purple ball. He didn't kind of probably give that a look because it went through the pins really well. And he might switch to that on the right lane. Here it is that. again. He's about 18 to 5 down lane. He's, he's definitely crossing some boards. So Chris throwing a asymmetrical big ball and Dino throwing a symmetrical pearl. It's amazing how different players see the lane in a different way. Folks at home, watch Dino's backswing. It's it's so defined, so unique, open at the top. With a bent elbow. And if you look at his hand, oh, a messenger and missed the 10. But if you see that follow through, his palm of his hand is yeah, literally watch, facing watch the pins. Watch one more time. And he, you can tell he didn't it, like it. Boom. I don't know if he didn't like it because he fell off the shot or if he just thought he got around it too much. But his backswing, like you said, he's way open at the top, but is, which is kind of, that's not different than a lot of players to, of today, but the bent elbow, as much as it's bent at the top, is kind of unique. 
It most certainly is. And his feet are quick. He doesn't waste any time getting to the line. Tommy Jones also <clears> opens <throat> it up at the top. Reminds me of Tommy a little bit. But Tommy bends his elbow pretty much somewhere in the downswing right uh -huh. before the release. Dino's elbow is already bent at the peak of the swing, and he just keeps it that way and unloads it at the bottom. And when that ball hits the pins and the sound is like it just crushed them. <laughs> Take a look at that one one more time. Open and boom. Hey, it's amazing he can stick the shot. I mean, his feet are, we always say ball speed is relative to foot speed. but And he's got great speed, but his feet are really quick. In comparison to Chris Barnes where he takes two steps and almost a pause, then finishes the, his approach. So bowling has really no defined styles. It's not like uh, back in the 60s, I guess, when you, you've seen a lot of stylists, Dave Davis, you know, Dave Sutar, guys are just long, lanky, real fluid swings. These guys today just put a bunch on it. It's a whole different ball game. Oh, oh, solid so eight. Well, that, we'll let you relive it, it, folks. That's 17 at the arrows out to like 5 6. But that ball, when it, it hit, it obviously deflected back to the right, just didn't drive through to take out the eight, or the five didn't take out the eight. You know, they always talk about splitting the eight nine now. The ball's got to split the eight nine. Relatively close match here early in this one here. Semi-final match coming up uh, in the next match will be Brad Angelo. Take on the winner of this one here. Take home this year's title. I asked Dino about the tape around his fingers because I noticed it, he doesn't bury his fingers to the tape. I asked what it was for. I thought maybe it was for support. He said actually to make his fingers swell a little bit. Wow, that's we have a ball game here. Dino open and boom. he just fires through that shot. He, he sure just, does. It, Looks like we're gonna get a rewack yeah. here. It's the first one. Look at his last shot again. Yep. And his third step is off to the left. He, that's how he opens that lane up so much. Maybe that's what I'll do every time a player takes a re-rack. I'll just keep replaying their shots over and over again. <laughs> Give them a few more. Yeah. That way if somebody's watching with uh, with no closed captioning on and the audio turned down, they'll be like, why did this guy throw 15, 16 <laughs> shots in the match? And they all look the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> same mannerisms. You see Kelly Kulik back there. She, she is cold. <laughs> She's freezing. Well, we got this wind turbine ahead of us uh, right above our head. That fan is going to town. Oh, it is. Oh, he didn't like that at all, but it struck. Yeah, so Dino can still max at 280. Barnes, 269. And I don't think that uh, Dino's even touched that ball. I mean, a lot of the guys have been putting a little bit of surface on their balls and just changing them. I think that pearl ball is just out of the box. There has to be a little bit of, you know, and everybody looks for it if you can find area, but that ball never got out near as far as the rest of the balls that he's been throwing on the right lane. That one only looked like it got out to like 7 8. Thing we don't know from up here if they planned it or was it an accident? <laughs> He's got that yeah, ball yeah, rolling yeah, forward yeah, through the pins. Oh, yeah, you can see it 
almost looks like it stops and says, I am going forward. You can see it just going tumbling in over end. So Dino's got to keep, keep striking, that's for sure. Well, they've played against each other enough that they both know that neither one of them at this point of the match, even though that Dino's got strike, spare, three-bagger, and Chris is spare, double, spare, double, anything can happen in the next couple of frames. They, the pressure has to stay on. This would be a big deal for Dino if he could get through Barnes and go on to win. Probably be the greatest accomplishment of his career. Well, it, I would think it would be. He's, only, he's got seven regionals. And to have a national title, walk into Bowling Center and see your banner hanging up uh, in a national stop. Yeah, I think that would be pretty much the icing on top of the cake. Big thing for Dino, I would think, is not overthink the process. Just relax, throw it. Try not to let your nerves get to you. Dino now has a job with, with Brunswick. He does tour repping out on a men's national tour. Players enjoy working with Dino. Well, he's got a pro shop too, so he understands the balls, the ball motion, and cover stocks. Oh, he didn't like that at all. But it holds pocket. Yeah. <laughs> if you looked at his face <laughs> on look that at, replay. Let's look at that one again. Look at his face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> looks like, the other oh, one. God, what happened? Those are the kind of breaks you need to win any time. Unfortunately, not the purest shots you've thrown, but to get the break. I like what Alan Riley says in the, in the chat. Barnes been doing the hook stop for years. Mm. Hook. Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> we said it together in unison. That's exactly right. Shout out again to all of you participating in our chat tonight and watching here on Bull TV. We certainly do appreciate it. Please tell your friends. Please let people know that PBA 50 now lives right here on Bull TV. I've really enjoyed my time out here with Craig. Um, it's the first time I got to work with Craig and, and really enjoying it. We're going to be some road warriors together. And, Tom, <laughs> getting the opportunity to bring you over from the work you were doing last year. It's, it's a perfect fit. That hook stop again. Well, Barnes, Barnes doesn't want to clown around here. Yeah. You know, Dino on the last shot, you know, went up and, and basically said, I threw that horrible. You right. know, we could see that look on his face. And, and he was he was hooping it up a little bit. You saw yeah. a little yeah. bit of animation there. And now yeah. Barnes giving it right back to him. Yeah. Hey, guys, I got Brad Angela down here. Brad, uh, first, congratulations. Number one seed, a chance to bowl for another title after you, you mentioned earlier quite a few seconds last year. But we're watching a lot of strikes today. How does that influence your ball selection here? Well, it's pretty easy to get to the pocket on this pattern, so uh, I'm going to be bringing my X1 over there that I used in in, uh, in that game three of that close match there. And then I have a phase four that hasn't went down the lane all week that I'm playing around with. And then the end of the first block, I, I used a X2, and that looked pretty good. So those are going to be the three options I'm taking over there. Pretty much it's right in front of you. You know where you have to play. I just went over and watched. They're... They're crossing arrows between, you know, 18 and 21, so I'll be in there doing something. Fortunate thing is, is, is that you know I get 10 shots, so that's a that's a big advantage to try to get lined up. All right, good luck to you today, and uh, Brad Angel had a chance to, to win his first title. He mentioned earlier he finished second three or four, maybe even five times last year, just couldn't sneak in a win, and maybe today's the day. Thank you, Craig, very much for that. You hear Brad Angelo, looks like he's going to maybe potentially use a ball he hasn't used all week. Well, he, he did practice it. I mentioned that phase four. Uh, and he, he struck with it. He had a good look with it. But when you get over here after, obviously, two, two whole games have been thrown again on the pattern. <laughs> and Dino is animated. So, obviously, the transition lanes do change. Every time a ball goes down the lane, it didn't change the environment. I'm not so sure why he didn't like that, but maybe that was just, or he did like that. I, 
I think it's playing with Barnes now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I really do. You think we're trying to get into somebody's head I here? think this is two two guys in Texas that are buddies <laughs> that are giving each other the business out here having some fun on the PBA 50 tour. Now Barnes is going to reset. We've seen him do this a couple of times. Guys, I'll be honest. Dino has only liked three shots off his hand all week long. Okay. <laughs> and he's still striking at like 85%. Okay, thank you, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> have we seen any of those three? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I have, no. <laughs> Barnes needs this one to stay in the match, and he yeah. does. Another hook stopper yeah. right there. So, again, yeah. the, the, you know, the max score, 280 for Castillo. Chris Barnes, 269. So we do have that possibility of a tie if Barnes were to strike out. <laughs> the possibility. That would be unique in, in this two, format. Two, two, 269, 269, that but, could happen. Yeah, but as much as these guys are striking, we could be here for a while. Yeah, that's true on the roll-off. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good We point. do have to be at the villages. <laughs> that's right. In about three days. Yeah. All right. I would imagine Barnes will double here. That's no. no. Very uncharacteristic of Chris Th Barnes. That... Either that was slow or just left off of his hand. And not the simplest spare in the world to pick up, too. No, not at all. Uh, three, six, nine, ten. About one way to pick it up and 900 ways to miss it. Yeah, he can kind of hook into it a little bit. Or some guys are going left to right, just hard and straight, hitting that front pen. That's splitting hairs when you do that. I mean, it there's is. There's a lot of deflection doing that. It is. We're hooking at it. He got it. 245 the max now for Chris Barnes. Dino basically has just got to show up. You can see the frustration oh, from he, Barnes. He's totally frustrated. And that was pure. As I like to say, that was more gooder. Heck of a performance by Chris Barnes. 279, 245 to all of us watching. That, that, those are great scores. You got Dave Wadka down doing some social media with his phone. You got Dave, Jason, Jason Couch is yelling at Dino. <laughs> Dino's got a lot of support. A lot of people yeah. want to see him win on the, on the regular tour. Boy, this would be a big one. It oh. could go one for one here. Obviously, he's still got Brad Angelo in his way, and he's still got to fill it up here. He just got to take his time. Let's go. Oh, that's that going to do it. That was pure. That was pure. Dino Castillo advances. I think he's still in a little bit of shock. He's, he's kind of looking at it. And I, I don't think we've seen one of those three shots yet <laughs> that he's thrown, <laughs> that he likes. Well, th that's when Dino's at his best is when he's got a little bit of room out there. He's loose. He's feeling good. That was a good shot. He just he's relaxed now. Yeah, and, and he was having fun. I, I think that's the biggest part. If he can stay yeah, relaxed and loose, have fun. loose, having a good time, and not having to to split boards and be absolutely perfect with every single shot, create a little area for himself with the way that he bowls. <laughs> You, you see Brad Angelo coming over, and uh, it looks like he's doing impersonations of what these guys were doing. Up That's on what the he was doing. He's like he's falling all over the place, waving his hands. It's a very loose environment out here. As as I said in in a, in a vlog I put together, a little documentary. It's uh it's no drama, just action out here on the PBA 50 tour. You know, it's it's not life or death out here, you know. Unfortunately, nobody's going to get rich on the senior tour, but we do have a great time. And there is titles. And it's always, it's always about the title. Guys will say, I can spend the money, but I still got the title. That's right. <laughs> well, we should have a heck of a title match here. Dino Castillo taking on Brad Angelo. Both are looking for their first title. Yeah. 
Brad last year came in second so many times. So he's looking for the first title. Dino, first trip to the show, and so far climbing the ladder. But his ball reaction right now is just sick. Yeah, but we've seen every player have a great ball reaction. And then they win their match, and then the next match they lose. They, they so far, well, right? That's the trend. You're right. They lost their ball reaction, and it's all been pretty much on the right lane when it started. Yeah, absolutely right, Tom. Folks, just want to remind you, we'll be back here coming up on Monday at the Villages. A squad qualifying begins at 9 a.m. We got three squads over at the Villages. That is a full field of 192 people, and I hear there's already 300 people signed up for the Pro-Am. Wow, that's outstanding. Norm Duke is on the list. Uh, I don't know if he's bowling for sure, but he's he's, he's on the squad he, list. Yeah, he signed up. He wasn't for the longest time that he's, his name showed up, so he doesn't live that far away, so I, can, I can't imagine that he wouldn't bowl, and it's a major. Folks in the chat, let us know. Type in. Tell us, who do you think is going to win our championship match here tonight? Is it going to be Brad Angelo? Or is it going to be Dino Castillo? And give us a, a championship score. Tell us what score you think oh. it's going to take to win here tonight. What yeah. will be the what, championship score? What's the over-under? Let's send it down to Craig. He's got a guest. Hey, guys. I got Jason Couch here, good buddies with uh, Dino Castillo. They're giving him a little ribbon here. But uh, honest, uh, serious question. How many shots? Give us the over-under. How many <laughs> shots in this last game is Dino actually going to like off his hand? <laughs> Probably not many. However, he has an issue of getting a little quick on his feet. So I, I tell him, slow down. Think about your steps. I said, if I got to yell it every time, and he's like, I hear you every shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dino uh, had a chance uh, five times on national tour to, to possibly bowl for a title. His first event here is a senior. He's in the championship match. What's, what's kind of going through his mind? What, what do you think his nerves are right now? I think he's okay. He seems pretty relaxed. Um, you know, he just he's going through the motions like he normally does. Uh, just gotta, you know, you gotta keep his feet slow. I mean, that's that's the only thing that's gonna get get in his way is himself. So, if he does that, he's gonna bowl a great game, and uh, I, I like his chances. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Yep. Bring it into the booth for just a second. Tom Carter, Mike Flanagan, first time working together. It's Have nice it sitting here with yeah, you, Yeah, it's, it's a great time. I, I appreciate the opportunity. I enjoyed doing it over the last couple of years uh, that I've been asked to do it. And when you asked, I was shocked, and I'm tickled to death to be here. Yeah, I'm happy to be here with you as well. We appreciate it. Uh, who do you like in this match? I got to go with Dino. I, I, I said it was my pick way earlier i mean with his ball, with his ball motion I, I i just think that with his rev rate and the angle entry that he's creating he's just going to mix them up more you know and nothing against brad angelo brad is a great player but right now if dino's nerves don't get to him i just think he's got the right ball motion going on i really think this one's about 50 50 here tonight i do but because Dino has been trying and chasing to get that national title on the, on the regular tour and now coming out bowling his first event here, I do believe in a stair progression. And I think that the more, uh, I guess, the elder statesman in Angelo, who's bowled for the title so many times, I think he gets his here tonight. But I'm calling it real close, 50-50. It's definitely going to be a close match. I mean, <clears throat> Brad's been here before. Dino's got the right ball motion. Uh, you could flip a coin, you know. Well, since we are flipping a coin, let's send it down to Craig and see who Craig likes in this match. Well, remember, I, I picked Dino to win you at about did. 10 a.m. this morning, so I, I'm not I'm not going away from that at all. Okay. I'm sticking with it. I'm the lonesome one here. I'm, I'm going with Angelo, but just barely. It's like 50.1% to 49.9. I really feel that way. I This really is. If this was, if we did have live betting, it would be minus 110 each way, I think, on this one. It's a... Uh, I think it's going to be an incredible match. I, I do. I just have a question. Is Dino going to leave a 10-pin on the right lane like every other player that wins a game? Oh, that's, you know, that could be, uh, that's an omen. It, it's happened to everybody so far. What, what's our what's our chat guys say out there? Are there our viewers at home watching live on Bolt TV? Who are they picking? Dino 247, Brad 228. Dino 268, Brad 247. 247 and 237, Brad. We've got all kinds. <laughs> we've got we've got all over the place. Two twelve to two oh seven Dino. 
Castillo, 257 and 249. 212 to 207. Have they been watching tonight? I don't know. <laughs> By frame five. <laughs> and Brett in here says, Mike, over under 500 this game. I would, I'll would. i tell you what, if you wanted me to set an over under on this game and this match, a little bit of nerves, I think, for both players, believe it or not. That's why I'm giving a slight edge to Angelo. And they, he just he just blew up the rack for an eight pin and just actually blew up the rack. It's dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the lights are off and we're done. <laughs> That's why we can't have nice things. <laughs> Over under for this one, uh, you know, I would say probably around high 230s to win this one, maybe like 220. So I'm going to go six, I'm sorry, 461. 461 would be my over under on this one. I'm taking 480. Okay. I just seen in the chat somebody said, is Tom Baker bowling the villages I, uh, out of clear blue? Uh, I don't know. He was supposed to bowl at this tournament and pulled out, so I don't know if he's hurt or if he's going to be bowling. We got a request for us from Don. Don wants us to call bumper bowling. It would be very entertaining. <laughs> How many times do you have to hit the bumpers? Bas I mean, basically what they're saying is we can basically call anything and they're going to be entertained. And that was very nice. Yeah. I'm liking, I'm liking what Craig's being able to bring to us by roaming around. We've got him roaming I, around, being I think able to that's inter awesome. interact with people. That, that is I think that's huge. Well, I also needed to get my steps in today, so that's definitely helping with me on that. So, you, you got your ped meter on, do you? I, I do. He's looking for PBA 50 tour title number one, Dino Castillo and his debut year. Yeah. Looking for PBA 50 tour title number one. That's the matchup. Guys, good luck. Good luck. Good job. We are going to have ourselves a, a new champion out here. It's going to be yeah. a wonderful day for one of there, these two players. There is going to be a new banner on the wall. You know, guys, one thing we know about Brad is, is he is not going to get uh, uh, tricked out there. He's one of the uh, most intelligent bowlers out there. It's just going to come down to execution, making quality shots. Well, wait till you see the front shot of Brad on the approach. The, the look that he has on his face looks like he's going to rip your face off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know Brad's thinking this is his time here tonight. Dino wants to do something about it. He must be listening to what Jason Couch said, keep your feet slow, because that, that tempo was slower than what he's been doing. <laughs> Absolutely. I think if Jason keeps yelling at him, keeps him laughing, he'll be okay. <laughs> He brought out the RST, too. Yeah, let's take a look at this one again. What do you see here, Tom? He, well, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. He was going to move in. He, they're, they're playing it between 18 and 22. That's where he's at. Takes it out to, like, 6, 7 down lane. Uh, that nice rhythm that I talked about earlier uh, in his matches, he still has, and that's what makes him as good as he is. And, you know, it's his time. But... Look at that look. Hey, if you <laughs> that lips curled, hey, he looks like he's gonna rip your face off. Well, you can't throw it any better than that. Angelo opens up with a double here in the championship match. So this is gonna be the test right here. It is the right the, right, the right lane, lane and and a double. Yep. I agree with you hundred percent, Tom. John Burkett in the chat. Awesome interacting with Burkett this week. He says, Brad has the goose gossage snare. <laughs> the goose <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you have to explain that one on the air with us ne next week, John. Appreciate all the players that spent time in the booth with us here this week. Make the show that much more entertaining for all the fans. Thank you guys for your volunteered time. It's showtime. Oh. Yep. 
All right, let's look at this one again. He's down through the shot, through the arrows. He's got, well, he's obviously getting the ball out on the lane a lot farther, but the speed and the rotation, he's getting it farther down lane, and the ball comes off the pattern harder than anybody else on the show today. He's just, his entry angle is sick. <laughs> Oh, we failed to mention this, but I'm sure everyone at home knows Dino Castillo is a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. Yeah, you couldn't tell. That's probably why he hasn't won yet. Oh. Yeah, I, I said it. You said it, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, so if he does win, he can listen to that back when he watches his championship win. Love you, Dino. Uh-oh. All right, run it down. All right, leaves the four pin. That was a pretty good shot, though. Uh, that was inside. It wasn't as crisp. I like it when a guy leaves a four pin on a bad shot as opposed to like a two pin or a weak ten. It means their ball's driving through the pocket and has a high chance of striking when they do hit the pocket. Yeah, Mike, I think this is going to be kind of like what we saw from Monticelli earlier, leaving that four pin. Dino is getting he's getting a little stiff right now. I mean, he's always happy go lucky bouncing, and he's yeah, he, he's a little bit almost too serious. So now I think he's going to make a little move left off that and just loosen an arm swing and just let it go. I agree with you 100%, Craig. Well, that's exactly what he's going to have to do because if he's starting to think about it, he's going to freeze up. Just He's got to stay relaxed. Breathe, as they say. Breathe. This, Slow, is, this is an opening here for, for Brad. Slow down time. He knows it. Uh, we, we've seen this before. We have on the right lane. Well, you know, I'm a little surprised that one didn't carry. That, that shot looked pretty well executed. Well, you can execute the shot. That doesn't mean the ball is going to read the pattern. <laughs> Perfect on the spare. I bowled right next to Brad this whole week, and his carry percentage and his striking was it was incredible. I mean, but it and his and I say it uh, so far a hundred times on the show, his timing and his rhythm is just pure. Tap on the old eight pin. Cue that one back up again. Look at that. Out to five six. Pure. So he didn't. He brought over the extra ball, but it hasn't left the rack yet. I don't even think I seen him throw it in practice, other than when he came over early with that phase four. This this match has slowed down considerably. Pace, oh, is, pace it, is much slower now. Oh, it, compared to all the matches we w we watched today, yeah, it's like they stopped time. It's like we're caught in traffic. <laughs> and I think that slower pace is definitely advantage Brad Angelo. You know, yeah. Dino's always a quick pace, so I, if I'm yeah. Dino, I want to speed things back up a little bit yeah. and don't, don't let Brad control the pace. Even yeah. Steven through four. Yeah, Brad's obviously he li he, he's a much more of a methodical player than Dino. Dino's kind of run and gun, and that's when he's happy. But it's almost like he's he, – don't overthink it. He, he needs to get in that happy place where he was the last match. Big breath. Taking a little extra time. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to relax. Get that heart rate down. That shot was pretty pure. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think Dino is is the crowd favorite here. I would have to agree. Well, I don't, 
Sometimes when you're, you're as serious as Brad is, I don't know if the crowd knows how to take you when you're that serious. That's true, and he really is. <clears throat> he is all business. Oh, that uh, could have been fatal. That's 7-10. Yeah, almost, almost a 7-10. So Brad is now having problems with the right lane. Yep. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to my original theory, angle entry, uh, something that Dino creates totally different than everybody else. Brad is an excellent spare shooter. Brad does a lot of coaching. He works with uh, Rick Benoit with the, the Bull U. Yeah, they got they, a great group. They take the yeah. Nationals every year. Yeah. They've got their own philosophies. They've got their own rules, the way that they do things, and they like to s the spread the knowledge to everyone else and help people bowl better. Thomas Larson, I know, is, is a big fan of that. Oh, chops out to seven. Well, we got some young talent, too, uh, from our s senior bowlers out there. You know, Parker Bones got two boys that are pretty doggone good. And Chris Barnes, boy, with Wichita, Ryan. I know, well, so is uh, Justin Bone. I mean, so <laughs> in a few years, we're going to have some great talent coming out of school. school and I believe they'll, they'll, they'll give the tour a try. Dino has really slowed the pace. Yeah, and I agree with what Craig said about, you know, I think he needs to speed it up a little bit. It's a big moment, though. Oh. Dino yelled at that Good. one, didn't like it. I think he thought that that ball was going too long down the lane. Tom, i got to ask mm -hmm. you here. You know, <laughs> you know, we've seen Dino throughout throughout this step ladder and the matches that he's bowled. It, it does seem like these shots that he that he throws that aren't good, but, but he's he's striking. He, yeah. He's playing the right part of the lane. He's matched mm -hmm. up really well. I mean, yeah. is he is he really throwing it th that bad? I don't think he's throwing it that bad. But I, he's, I don't either. But he must see something or feel something off of his hand that he doesn't like. Or uh, it's a mental strategy. I mean, because well, who wants to lose to a guy that's throwing a bat? <laughs> you got a point. Right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Dino, yeah. Dino is focused. I've never seen him take this much time on the approach. And we're going to need more time if we. <laughs> <laughs> he liked that one. Oh. I heard see, him say, yes, sir. That one on the replay is so much different because he's been just kind of throwing it and really not overly posting it. He really posted that shot. And I was talking to Jeff Johnson earlier, and we were talking about posting shots. And sometimes when people over post the shot, it slows their ball down, mm -hmm. which what makes it hook too much. You know, I went down and, and I talked to, to Dino's buddies there. You know, we got Couch and Watka and Tony Franklin about that exact thing about why why is Dino trying to slow it down? That's Brad's game. He needs to speed it up, and they're they're, they're with us 100. percent He needs to play his game, yeah, and not let Brad dictate what's happening. Yeah. So right now, pacing uh, it's a tie match. You know, you had 20 in the sixth for Brad and 20 in the seventh for Brad, and you got 149 to 149. Brad has a chance here in the seventh and the eighth to go up and take the lead. If yeah, if I was Dino, when is his turn? He's got to get up and go. Yeah. You know, he's out of his element right now. <clears throat> you couldn't and, have peered that one any yeah. better. And Brad is definitely in his element. Take a look at Brad again. Yeah. Brad's posting them. I mean, Brad's doing what he's do he's always done. But I think several pros out here, they, they tend to, not that you call it playing games, but uh, 
they try to change the rhythm, change the pace, get you out of your element. If Game, get gamesmanship, you, yep. You know, and if you can, I can get you out of your element, then your rhythm gets messed up. And if your rhythm gets messed up, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Now uh, Brad giving the fist pump. Huge yeah. shots yeah. there. Triple now, sixth, seventh, and eighth. 259, the max score for Angelo. Dino Castillo, max at 239. Yeah, 239. So Dino taking a re-rack. Yep, and all the pressure's on Dino now. He's slowing it down even more taking a re-rack here. Yes. You know, hey, but you know what? We've, we've been questioning the strategy. Let's see how this thing turns out. You know, Dino's out there doing the bowling. We're not. Right. You know, whatever's going through his mind is, you know, the, it's right for him. It is. He, you know, maybe he's afraid of throwing it past the break point or something, and he's really going to slow everything down. But he did get slow on the last shot. You know what happens when you get slow on a shot? Sometimes you go up and you gas the next one. Right. That's what you got to be careful of. You got to you got to block that out of your mind. And we know for a fact that the back ends are crisp and the ball goes left if you give it a chance. Yep. And Dino's got the most rotation for it to go the furthest left. Oh boy. And then some. Come on, Dino. Oh. oh. Ten pin. Wrap 10 for Dino. That look there is just un unfortunate, but it almost looks like a, a defeated look. You know, he it, it does already, yeah, but uh, he's got to pick this up. Covers a spare. Good spare shooter. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything can happen. There's still two frames left. You know, he's got to fill those frames. 229, max out, you know. We just seen Brad on this right lane almost 710 a couple frames ago. And anything can happen. Oh, yeah. Brad yeah. hasn't broke through yet. He's you're, finished you're, second so many times. He wants this one. I mean. He is questioning himself right now. He doesn't know where to stand. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, you might be right. Oh, no. That's not good. Big shot in the ninth for yep. Castillo. Uh, he didn't like. He didn't like any of it. When, when you're standing on the approach, going, looking down, and not knowing where your feet are supposed to be, that's not a good thing. Oh, what I think happened there, and of course we're all guessing here, but uh, I don't want to be dogging on Dino too bad here. But I think after he went went high on the last shot, I think I think he made a move off of a bad shot. Yep. Potentially. Yeah. Well, you, Brad's in the driver's seat now. Oh, by far. Best Dino can do is 218. And Brad, if he, if he were to spare strike out, he would bowl 218. He went nine spare strike nine. He didn't. No doubter right no. there. That's probably the shot of yeah. the match. Yeah, there's, you know, 39-69. He's right now 290 or 219. <laughs> yeah, it's all over but the crying almost. It sure is. But this is Dino's first event to come home second in his yeah. first event. Like I said, I think this it's is going straight stair down the step middle. process. Yeah. There you go. Did. He threw it straight down the middle. He already did the math. He knew what was going on. We have a brand new title holder on the PBA 50 Tour, Brad Angelo. And good for Brad. Well, yeah, he's been to the dance several times, and now he finally gets his win. I mean, that's a huge monkey off your bat. Sure is. Dino's going to fast track his way through, let Brad have yeah. his moment. Congratulations to Brad Angelo, your 2022 Lightning Strikes Open Championship down here in Fort Myers, Florida. The first champion of the PBA 50 Senior Tour 2022. That's right. <laughs> Again, I, I can't tell you enough how wonderful of a week it's been here for me. I know for Craig as well, for you, Tom, yeah. everybody here has had a great time. The, the players have been so receptive to, to the new coverage here on Bowl TV. All the fans have shown up. What a what a great start to the season. 
I think it's been incredible. And, uh, any way you look at it, it, it the people, the seniors. Congratulations really to the Brad team. Angelo, our champion of the PBA Lightning Strikes Open here in Fort Myers. Brad, congratulations. Second places are gone. You got to win out here. What's going through your mind? I got to tell you, it took me 14 shows on the main tour to win my first title, and uh, I was beginning to think that it was going to go that way out here too. So, uh, very fortunate. Got a couple breaks. Um, you know, Dino. I've been bowling against Dino now for over 30 years, and and uh, he's he's one of the fiercest competitors, but yet the nicest guys. And and and. So, Dino, great bowling all week. You know, you're, you're going to get yours, I'm sure. It won't be too long. Probably next week, knowing you. So, congratulations to, to Dino. So, next year we come back, you'll be a defending champion. Are you bowling next week in the Villages to try to make it two in a row? I'm bowling next week in the Villages. Um, I can't wait to come back here already next year. Uh, I'm staying with longtime friends of mine, uh, Kevin and Chrissy Stewart. They open up their home, and they're, they're like family. Um, so thank you to you guys as well. I can't wait to come back next year, but especially Robert, you guys are awesome here. This whole staff is fantastic. Thank you. Hey, okay, congratulations, Brad. One more round of applause for our champion. And we'll see everybody next week in the villages for stop number two on the 2022 PBA 50 season.